We've been talking about urban models. The next one on our list is going to be the Griffin Ford model, which was proposed by Ernest Griffin and Larry Ford in the 1980s, as they studied the growth and development of Latin American cities. Consequently, the model was also known as the Latin American City Model. As is the case with any of the urban models that we've looked at so far in our study of geography, the model emphasizes the use of space as the city grows over time. Geographers are interested in how people utilize land and how it impacts the growth of the city. The CBDs in Latin American cities were prominent during the colonial eras, but afterwards slowed in growth until the cities in the region began to develop in the 1900s. Later in the century, the older traditional CBD became distinct from the newer modern market area. This is also usually a commercial spine surrounded by the elite residential housing. The spine and the residential area will resemble some of the high-end elite upper-class regions of North America, such as what you might see at Hilton Head or places like it. There are places to shop, other forms of entertainment like golf and theaters, all these good things. As we learned with the urban rooms model, as some cities develop, some areas operate as nodes similar to the CBD and become edge cities. This is what the mall represents at the end of the spine. Like the modern market in the city center, the mall contains office space too. The model also shows an area of gentrification. Gentrification occurs when historic areas ha that have been occupied by lower class part of society start to be revitalized and renewed in an effort to preserve historic buildings and other architecture. Gentrification is controversial due to the fact that it often leads to the displacement of current residents in lieu of richer ones, but that's content for another video. The industrial sector signifies the rise of industry in Latin American cities. The industrial park is not the city center, but on the outside, distinguishing cities in this region from North American cities. The zone of maturity is the area where middle class society dwells. This concentric zone may have previously been occupied by elites prior to them moving closer to the spine sector. Therefore, infrastructure is good in the zone of maturity and the sector has access to the CBD and market area. The next zone is the zone of in-situ accretion and represents an area of the city where development starts to go a little downhill. This is due to the lack of infrastructure, so naturally this area attracts people of the lower class. The area serves as somewhat of a transitional area between the city and the periphery, the latter of which there is practically no infrastructure in city planning. Now, I'm not sure if this is the correct way to explain it, but if you break down the phrase in situ accretion, in situ means situated in the original place, and accretion means the process of growth. So if you think about it, this transitional region signifies the growth of the city as it moves literally from the planned part of the city to the unplanned periphery. Outside of the zone of situ accretion lies the periphery and the zone of disamenity. These are made up of squatter settlements. Now squatter settlements or squatters are residents that are essentially homeless and they build ramshackle houses on land that they don't own. And in the case of Latin American cities, they exist on the periphery or on the outside of the city. And since there's no structured planning, many squatter settlements have very little sanitation, unstable electricity or no electricity at all, and are prone to fires and other issues. And squatter settlements also tend to have very high population density. But these places are so impoverished that they operate like urban frontiers. They're are often in practice outside of the control of the city. Rather, these areas may be dominated by competing drug lords. You have also certainly seen portrayals of these favelas in movies and video games. So there you have it. We took a second, we reviewed what the Latin American city model looks like, a little bit about what the different sectors and zones resemble. If you found this video helpful, you like it, or you just want to help my channel grow, feel free to like, subscribe, share, send it to your friends, send it to your teacher friends, anyone who might can benefit from it. Let me know in the comments what else you want to know about human geography, and I'll see you in the next video.